Hello, welcome to Andrew Lavery Show, where we talk about investing in the stock market. In this video, we will analyze Nike to see if they're a good investment or not. And we're going to analyze them just as I would as if I was considering making an investment in the company. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'll let you know if I think Nike is a good investment based on everything that we see. And I'll let you know what I think a fair share price is for Nike and how I figure that out. Before we move on, definitely hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, notification bell. I post new videos as often as I can. Okay, so get down to it. The first thing I look for because I am a dividend investor is does Nike pay a dividend? We're on Yahoo Finance, summary tab. And right here for dividend and yield, yes, Nike does pay a dividend. The annual dividend is $1.22 per share or 0.72% of the current share price. So that they pay a dividend, that's great. I like, the little, I like the little history on that dividend. And the first thing I look for is how many years in a row has Nike increased their dividend? I like to see at least 10 years in a row of increasing the dividend at least once a year. And you can see right here, dividend increases 20 years in a row. Um, this is on dividend.com. So perfect. They've been increasing their dividend for 20 years straight. I love it. But I want to make sure their dividend increases are at least keeping pace with inflation. So I'm here on the dividend payout history part of the page and come down, view all payout history. And I come down, I'll, I'll do two samples. I'll go to the mid-1990s if there is, you know, the history is far enough, goes back far enough. And just take, find out what they paid. So in 96, uh, they paid four cents for the entire year per share. So I come to U.S. Inflation Calculator, go to put that 1996 in there, put in the four cents, and what do we get? We get seven cents. So just to keep pace with inflation since 1996, Nike would have to pay seven cents a year per share. They're paying a dollar twenty-two, so way outpacing inflation. That's awesome. And I'll do two samples. I always like to do two. Something more recent. I usually do 2016. So here, 2016, they're paying 66 cents. So I'll come up here, do that again, and 66 cents, calculate. So 76 cents is what they'd have to pay just to keep pace with inflation since 2016. They're paying $1.22, so way outpacing inflation by a mile. That's awesome. Perfect. So the next thing I look for is coming back to Yahoo Finance and click Statistics. <clears throat> scroll down i want to make sure a company is profitable and i look here you can see here profitability you got profit margin operating margin both these percentages are very healthy looking percentages they're both positive that's the main thing i'm looking for is at least a positive percentage a higher is always better but definitely a good solid profit margin and operating margin here this profit margin is telling me that for every hundred dollars in revenue nike brings in they got thirteen dollars and seventeen cents left over after paying the bills so this management effectiveness is where I look to next, and I want to make sure the return on assets, return on equity, that these percentages are definitely at the very least positive. Higher is definitely better as always, but at least positive on those percentages. If those percentages are negative, I will not invest. It not no, not, There's nothing else I could, I could see. I would probably end my analysis right now if I saw that these percentages were negative. I would move on to the next company. So that's how firm I am on that. Next I look for is a quarterly revenue growth. YOY means year over year, meaning they're taking the current quarter we're looking at now and comparing the revenue from this quarter to the revenue for the same quarter one year ago. And this is letting us know that right here, we got a 15.6% increase in revenue in this quarter's revenue compared to the same quarter one year ago. So that's a good sign that the company is growing. Growing revenue is the first thing that has to happen for a company to grow. So that's definitely a good thing. Next, I look for is the quarterly earnings growth. Again, year over year, earnings earnings is just another name for profit. And you're saying that the profit or the earnings for this quarter is 23.5% higher than the same quarter one year ago. Awesome. So you're growing your revenue. You're also growing your earnings. Fantastic. Again, um, you always like to see positive percentages here. Higher is definitely better. But if there are, sometimes if the percentages are just into the negative, say negative one, negative two, I don't hold it against the company that much, but I would like to definitely see those percentages turn positive for sure, relatively soon. Next, I look at here would be the total debts. I want to know how much debt a company has. Too much debt is never good. And we got just under $13 billion in debt. Now, it's a lot of money, but to tell if that's a lot of money for Nike, you look at the total debt to equity ratio. And with this being well under 100, that's awesome. That's a very low debt to equity ratio. And what that is telling me is that this... $12.79 billion in debt 
is not a lot of money for Nike to take on. This is they can take on this debt and manage that risk relatively easily, and they really have no no problems at all. If this was much higher, say five hundred, six, seven, eight hundred, I've seen it over a thousand in some debt to equity ratios. If you got a really high debt to equity ratio number, then that lets me know that whatever dollar amount you see for the debt is a lot of money for the company to take on. But this is really low. Um, I usually draw the line right around the 400 mark for debt to equity ratio. Once it hits 400, I start to shy away from the company. And coming up, go to financials. And right here, we're on the income statement, looking at yearly numbers. And keep in mind, all numbers are in thousands. So um, what I want to look for here is the revenue. And I want to see the revenue increasing every single year, ideally. And we can see an increase here in 2019. Uh, we did have a decrease going into 2020. And then May 31st is when they end their year. Um, a good solid increase from the prior year. And it looks like we're going to, I bet you they're going to have another good increase when they report their, oh, I'm sorry. Um, they're probably, uh, this is uh, trailing 12 months. So this, the fact that this is higher than their May 31st, 2021 numbers. This is letting me know that they're probably going to do pretty well in 2022 when they report those May 31st, 2022 final, final year numbers. But in any event, they're going up. Uh, they had one hiccup right here in 2020. Sometimes that happens. It's not a huge deal. As long as at least I'm seeing an overall upward trend. So we got 2018 to 2021. It's going up. So at least an overall upward trend. I'll take that. That's uh, But ideally, I would like to see increases every year, even if they're small increases. Next, uh, come to the cash flow. Again, annual numbers. Everything's in thousands right here. And we're going to head and hit expand all. And scrolling down, uh, come down to the free cash flow. Uh, where is it? Right down here. So I want to see the free cash flow go up every single year as well. And we did see a big decrease in free cash flow here as compared to the year prior. Remember, this is the year where the revenue went down. Uh, but we did have a good solid rebound in the free cash flow just recently here when they reported their final year's numbers about uh, about seven months ago now. Almost seven months ago. So a good solid increase. Again, an overall upward trend, you know, almost uh, $4 billion to nearly $6 billion. So an overall upward trend in the free cash flow. So that's good. Um, but ideally, we'd like to see the number increase every single year. The reason why this number is important is because this is where your dividend money comes from. So if this number is increasing every year, there's an excellent chance, not a guarantee, but an excellent chance your dividend payouts will increase every year as well. So you can see right here, this is the, the dividend, the common stock dividend paid. The number is negative because it's money leaving the company, so that's not a big deal. I should have had my calculator opened up already. But what I like to do is I just do the most recent year. I like to know what the payout ratio was. So how as, as a percentage, what percentage of the free cash flow was paid out in dividends? So <clears throat> here's the here's the um, dividends that were paid out from 2020 into 2021. And so I'll just do six, three, eight, zero, zero. Remember these numbers are in thousands, so it's actually 1.6 billion. But we'll keep it like it is uh, divided by and five nine six two. And equals so payout ratio of twenty about twenty seven and a half percent. So that's a very good payout ratio. I like anything under fifty percent. And the reason being is if the company has a decrease in revenue from or I mean cash flow from one year to the next, that gives them a cushion to still be able to increase their dividend the, the next year, even though their free cash flow went down a little bit. So there's an excellent there's a very big cushion to increase uh, to be able to increase their dividend, even if their free cash flow decreases a little bit. Um, over the course of this next year when uh, when they report their next numbers. so And you can see right here, um, 2020, May 31st, 2020 numbers, they paid out about $1.45 in free cash flow, or excuse me, in dividends, but they only had about $1.4 in free cash flow. So they paid out more in dividends. So they actually had a payout ratio over 100%. Uh, the payout ratio was definitely more reasonable in the two years prior. So when I see that, that's not a good sign at all. But they had a solid uh, rebound here for these most recent yearly numbers. So I'm not going to hold it against them too much for this year right here, even though their payout ratio was well over 100%. Next, I look for, um, here we go. Hold on. There is this little chart right here on the side I like to look at. Uh, the green bar is revenue, which we already saw that. But the blue is the earnings. I like to see earnings increase every single year as well, ideally. 
But overall, at least if I can get an upward trend, which is what we have here. So we have $1.93 billion in earnings in 2018 compared to $5.73 billion in earnings in 2021. So definitely an overall upward trend. You can see we did have that decrease in 2020. The revenue went down, so did the earnings. Um, but an overall upward trend So with, with the revenue and the earnings. So that's definitely a good sign. Next, I would do is come to E-Trade. <clears throat> now here on Nike's page on E-Trade, E-Trade's my broker, um, but I go to Fundamentals and scroll down just a little bit. There's some paragraphs here I like to read. This first one right here, Nike's debt to equity ratio indicates it has been less aggressive with using debt to finance growth than 60% of its peers in the footwear industry. So that's awesome. Not using that or relying on uh, on taking on debt in order to grow the business, and that, at least not as much as uh, as their competitors. So that's definitely a good sign and not a surprise given their debt to equity ratio was so low. Profitability, Nike's gross margin is more than 82% of other companies in the footwear industry, which means it has more cash to spend on business operations as compared to its peers. More cash is never a bad thing. As indicated by the operating margin, Nike controls its costs and expenses better than 82% of its peers. Awesome. You can't let the cost get out of control. So that's a very good sign. And right here, the return on equity for Nike shows that it is able to reinvest its earnings more efficiently than 85% of its competitors in the footwear industry. Reinvesting their earnings. So the, the management definitely really seems to know what they're doing. They're controlling their costs really well. They're reinvesting their earnings more efficiently than nearly every competitor in their industry. Not all, but most of them. So Nike seems to have really good management and they're running the company very well. So that's the last thing that I would look at with regards to the um, um, just overall evaluating the company. So now we need to check the, the price of the company. And one thing I forgot to do was to bring up, uh, hold on one second here. I forgot to bring up the uh, fair price that I came up with. So let's open up the dividend calculator. <clears throat> One second. All right. So, so right here. So the current share price as of today, which is uh, December fifth, the current sh uh, share price is one hundred seventy dollars and twenty four cents. I came up with a fair share price of ninety two dollars and five cents. And the way I do that um, is that I come, I I figure out what I get what the uh, the current annual dividend is, which happens to be a dollar twenty two, and then I divide that by the average dividend yield, which I came up with of a dollar, or excuse me, a 1.33%. So the current annual dividend divided by the average dividend yield of 1.33%. And I come up with a fair share price of $90 and $92 and five cents, which holds the company about 84, almost 85% overvalued. So that is huge, definitely huge. Um, overall, would I invest in Nike? I think Nike definitely seems like a great company. They got good cash flows, good profitability. The uh, management seems to know what they're doing. Their, their debt seems to be a, definitely a manageable situation. Um, this right here with their share price, I would not invest at this time. I would probably hold it to the back burner and let the share price come down a little bit or let the, um, um, the fair value increase to catch up to the current share price, one of the two. But I, I would definitely hold off on investing in Nike just because I think they're so way overvalued at this time. But I would definitely keep it on the back burner, a good, a good company to have on the watch list. So that's all I have for everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Any questions, comments, uh, any feedback at all on this video or all my videos, put that down below in the description. I really appreciate it. Take care. <clears throat> excuse me. Take care. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.